Good morning from Glen Orkey. I'm up on a Corbett bagging trip today. I've got a nice circuit of two Corbetts to do. And I've also got my camping gear in the car, so if I can find a nice little quiet spot, I'm going to have a, a roadside camp tonight because it's the Monday bank holiday weekend. <clears throat> it's been a bit of an Arctic blast this weekend. Some of the higher hills have had a dusting of snow and it's been down to freezing. It's been about six degrees today though, so it certainly is a bit of a chill in there. <clears throat> Could be one of these days, you get four seasons in one though. But uh, I'll see what it's like up in the tops later on. So my first target of the day is this Corbett here which is Ben Vreck Lear and the second Corbett is this one which is Ben Utley you can see there, hopefully the camera picks up there's like a band of quartzite running down the hillside there Right, once I get over this little rise here, I reckon I'll be presented with this long, flattish ridge, a nice easy walk over to the summit. That's if my map reading skills are right. Let's find out. So just as I thought, I've got less than 50 metres to the summit, but it's over a kilometre to actually reach the summit. But it's easy walking, it's flattened right off, so let's just march on. This one looks the highest, but I'm going to touch that one anyway just to make sure. I've managed to find a little bit of respite out of the wind here, so I can just quickly talk about my next uh, Corbett here. So this is Ben Utley, and I think my route will be up through those broken crags, up onto the shoulder to the summit, but it's got this really nice quarry bowl. The only thing it's really missing is a nice body of water down there, but it's a nice looking hill. So I just need to get myself down to the Bialak and then up. That's me off the first cord, but now I'm actually making really good time. I need to slow down. If I'm feeling energetic, there is a, a cord on the other side of the glen I can do. Uh, it'd be another five hour walk, so I don't know. I'll see how I feel. Probably not though. I quite fancy just getting the tent up and chilling out by the river. The summit's around here somewhere. I've got about 10, 15 metres. I'm also feeling spots of rain. I'm not going to rush out for the waterproofs just yet. Let's try to seek out the summit. Come on, Cairn, where are you? Come on, Cairn. Come on, Cairn. Where's the Cairn? I 
in all fairness, I don't think that cairn marks the true summit. I think it's further back there. But nevertheless, it's bagged. So I'm going to get myself off this mountain and get some lunch. I'll see you further down. This little walking looks pretty cool. It's almost like it's man-made at that side. That'd make a nice uh, wild camp just in there. Do you remember the band of quartzite I mentioned at the start of the video? Well, here it is here. It runs right down here. And it gets right craggy there and it must drop down the hillside because remember, there's that big long ridge that I'd done earlier. And I was coming up the slope so you could see it from that side. So that's quite impressive. Here's this band of quartzite just to the other side. Looks more impressive you here. I think I dropped down this way anyway, so see, I think we follow this down, so we'll have a look on the way. Well, I think this is a fine place for lunch. So for lunch, I've got one of these tuna salad Mediterranean style pasta pots. I don't know why I buy them. I wouldn't even feed these to the cats. <coughs> See if I fed these to the cats, it would turn into that jog on. Crack open a Felix, eh? <laughs> See, when you first open these, you just get that overpowering smell, and it does smell like cat food. No mackerel wraps today. <laughs> That's me fed and watered once again. And my route off this hill is basically following the band of quartzite down to the forestry there. And then I think I just sort of skirt on the outside of the forestry back to pretty much where I started. So that shouldn't be too bad. <clears throat> That there's the last of the uh, quartzite crags. It's came down in a straight line all the way from the summit. It's dropped about 400 metres. Pretty impressive. Almost like a natural Hadrian's Wall. Well there is the path out. Am I glad to see that? Yes I am. This is quite cool actually. They've got a, a regeneration project here. You can see they're all more native. And on the other side of the fence, they've got the commercial plantation. Well, I've got about uh, a kilometre to go and I'm back at the car. Uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to enjoy the last of this walk through the woodland and then I'll bring you back once I've found somewhere to camp. I'll see you then. Well, that's me pitched up as you can see. I've got a nice little spot just by River Orkey. And uh, the road's just behind me obviously, but it's fine. Although I've seen six ticks already. I've had two on me, two on the tent two crawling on my gear, all various sizes, little nymph ones to the bigger ones that's giving me the heebie-jeebies. But anyway, I've been sent this um, sleeping mat to test out. So, a cheeky unboxing. Let's have a look and see what it's like. These are available on Amazon, they're £28. And uh, I hadn't heard of them before. They're called, um, what are they called again? Hold on two seconds. They're called Shea Sun Inflatable Sleeping Mats and as you can see they're quite small. Wow that's tiny. It's called Light Tour on the packaging. I'll put a link in the description below 
I'm not on any commission or anything. Uh, I got this for free in return for a review, so um, all right. I don't know how much it weighs, but I'll weigh it when I get home and I'll put that in the bottom of the screen there. So yeah, the chasing sleeping mat. I mean, I use a, an Alp kit cloud base. It's going to be pretty similar to that. I don't know what size it. Where's my phone? It's a big phone right now. <laughs> but yeah. That must be about between four and five hundred grams. Thirty two seconds. Well, first impressions, it's quite good actually. This is quite a, a good idea. It's not quite your egg box construction, but you've got these sort of V-shaped ridges. <clears throat> what I like about it is it doesn't taper at the feet, because I always tend to find my feet end up rolling off. I'm five foot ten, and to be fair, well, hmm, I'm five foot ten and I'm it's a perfect size for me so unless you sleep with your knees bent then if you're over five foot ten it might just be a tad too small for you but um nah, it's all right like just get some scran on the go now i wouldn't waste any of my expensive freeze-dry meals when i'm car camping so i've got some bachelor's pasta and sauce and a tin of Tesco Spam Spam Glorious Spam so that's tea sorted I've got a cup of Kanzi Lager to wash it down as well so it's quite peaceful here oh, it's good just having River Orchid just in front of me there listen to the football but did the, the result didn't go my way so you can't win them all We're in the money, we're in the money. I'll be ready in no time. I think I'm going to go to bed shortly. It's um, back at 10 at the moment. I'm absolutely paranoid about ticks, so I keep, keep finding them everywhere. All different bloody sizes. I mean, <laughs> if I just sit awake paranoid, and then go home tomorrow and check myself over. I'm usually okay, I don't have many attaching to me, but... Um, I'm not totally invincible to them. We'll see. The joys of uh, pitching in Woodland, eh? Anyway, I'm off to bed. Night, guys. Good morning, campers. Well, that was a good sleep. Um, no wind at all. And even with all the ticks trying to get in, I wasn't too paranoid. This match really good. It's a bit slidey. But other than that, I can't fault it, it's comfortable. Anyway, I've forgotten my mug, um, so I can't even have a coffee now. I suppose I could drink it in my pot, but uh, I'm just going to go to the Green Welly, I think, and get something there. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.